morning, YouTube, and welcome to the question of the day. Normally, I'll do this as a short on YouTube, which is just 60 uh, seconds, but today I just decided to actually answer more than one question of the day since I had a little extra now space to invest in uh, this knowledge cultivation program. So, uh, I did a poll yesterday, as you may or may not be aware. And what I did was I posed four or five questions. Which question would you, the viewer, like me to answer in 60 seconds? And by far the most popular uh, choice was, where does authority come from? And then someone um, with my perception got a little cheeky with it and was like, what's the point of this question? We are each our own authority, so on and so forth. But... That's what I mean by this being 90% psychological. The question wasn't who or what is the authority, it's where does it come from? It's a big difference. So the answer to that, as I said in the comments, I've done multiple videos on authority, where it comes from. And the short answer is knowledge is authority knowledge is authority and the ability and skill to convey that knowledge to transship that knowledge to another contract party that's where authority comes from if you watch those old videos of colin david eiffel and colin miller and colin russell hyphen j colin gould they come in with knowledge as their authority no one certified them to be a federal postal judge or whatever other titles they claimed no one certified them to do that they did that themselves through knowledge. No one approved them or authorized them to have those titles. Their knowledge did. Like I remember there's a video where Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould is talking about some 16 year old federal postal judge. Let that sink in. He said a 16 year old federal postal judge who went into court and did whatever they did and was successful with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now also take into account that I've also heard Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould say that it takes 15 years of study to be a, f a federal postal judge. So this guy who was 16 year old federal postal judge must have been studying since the, the age of one year old. Get my drift? Knowledge is authority. If you know how to do something, then you have the authority to do it. Why? The reason is because you know what you're doing. You can back up what you say. My authorization to teach correct sentence structure is my knowledge. I know what I'm doing and the certification of that is this YouTube channel. The certification of this is every single grammar workshop I've done since February of 2018. Is there anybody else out there that can say the same thing that I just said. That they have a YouTube channel with all the correct sentence structure knowledge on the YouTube channel. That they've been doing workshops for this many years with hundreds of students. I mean, through workshops, through one hour video confidential grammar workshops. Is there anyone else out there that can say that? Or is saying that? I don't know. <laughs> That's a rhetorical question, I guess. So that's that question. Now the next question is um, if there's a mistake, a grammatical mistake on the live life claim, what do we do about it? Because I literally have gotten dozens and dozens and dozens of people contacting me saying that they've bought live life claims from this uh, group or that group. And there's errors on it. There are errors on their live life claim, the grammatical errors, um, or they haven't been uh, witnessed, meaning that whoever they're buying the live life claim from just asks for their like social security cards, their licenses, their driving licenses, and that's it. There's no video witnessing. L let me make it clear. If you're going to be a witness, what does that mean you're a witness to something? It means you sense something. You see, you hear. So to be a witness on a live life claim for someone else, 
first of all, you yourself must be a live life claimant. And second of all, you at least have to have a video conference with them so that you can talk to them, you can see them, you can hear them, and you witness them. You can't be a witness if you have not actually spoken to someone and seen them, what they look like, and can certify that they are a live creature. That nullifies the whole purpose of a live life claim. Anyways, I digress. So for whatever reason, what, how do you fix it? Well, number one, this is just a suggestion. Learn the correct sentence structure, communication, parsi, syntax, grammar for yourself. And then create your own live life claim with yourself as the authority. Because again, there's a copyright copy claim section in the footer of the live life claim. If you, the live life claimant, if your name is not in the copyright copy claim, then you do not hold the copyright copy claim to your live life. Period. End of story. Tell me something different if I'm not correct. If it says, for the copyright copy claim of this live life claim is whatever, with the now space, by the, and then there's someone else's name there other than yours, it's not yours. And you've given it away. Actually, you haven't given it away. You've actually paid someone to take it from you. Sorry for laughing, but I find the whole logic of these scenarios ludicrous. And as the more and more I go on, the more vocal I get about it. I'm peaceful and neutral. However, I don't really like to see people being taken advantage of or hoodwinked or sucked into cult-like behavior. Let's put it that way. So that's what you do. If there are mistakes on your live life claim, learn the grammar and correct it. Or find someone to help you correct it. But I highly recommend learning the grammar. Next question. Why don't I affiliate with or work with other groups or people publicly in the quote unquote quantum grammar contingent or crowd? Quite simply, the reason is the majority of people that are out there and what they're doing uh, with regards to correct sentence structure, I don't agree with. I don't like what I see. And that's what contract's all about. It's all about agreeing with something or not agreeing with something. It's all by consent. I see a lot of contract parties out there being very warlike, being very rude, aggressive, well, there's nothing wrong with being aggressive, but when you trespass on someone, when you're trying to tell someone what to do, that's a whole different thing entirely. For example, a while back, a year or two ago, there was some kind of thing going around the, um, where people were using this template letter to contact the fiction media and command them to do something. Think about that for a minute. It would be like me going down to a McDonald's, walking in there and commanding the cashier to do their job the way I want them to do their job. It would be like you coming up to my house and telling me that I need to paint the outside of my house because you don't like the way I painted it. It's a trespass. Now, if the media is damaging you in some way, that is not the way it is to be handled if you're to use correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. The way to handle it would be to use the 12B7 through 12B1, create a document contract, for, uh, document contract postal vessel court venue, show the damages, and make your claim in that way through the post office you wouldn't do it through some template letter with uh, incorrect grammar on it let's put it that way okay let's see what's the next question what is a fate writ volition claim i've also covered this in other videos on this channel I'll just briefly reiterate what a fate writ volition claim is. Basically, 
when we talk about correct sentence structure and you'll hear colon David Ipenwin, colon Miller, and colon Russell hyphen J, colon Gould say this, the most important thing is the volition. What is your volition behind what you're claiming, what you're doing, your actions, your words, your grammar? Well, what a fate writ volition claim is, is you writing down on a piece of paper using correct sentence structure, showing exactly what your volition is. It's a volition claim, a claim of your volition. It's a contract with yourself. And you can show that to someone if someone says, well, what's your volition? Here's my volition. It's right here on paper. There's no argument. It's done very similar in a way to how a CPAS is done, how a live life claim is done, or any other correct sentence structure claim is done. It is your fate. And your fate is only as good as how well you can communicate. That's what a fate rip volition claim is. As far as I know, um, I'm the only person that really talks about this in the public on YouTube. The person who created the idea of the fate rip volition claim was my friend, brother, and tutor, colon raven hyphen farhad hyphen tohidi colon afarin. He shared those concepts with me, and then um, I took it from there and created my fate rip volition claim using uh, the concepts that he shared with me. So I'm more than happy to help anyone if they want to create a fate rip volition claim. However, it is uh, necessary that I certify your level of grammar knowledge. First, you must have a certain level of grammar knowledge in order to create a fate rip volition claim. Because if you have a fate writ volition claim and you cannot explain it to another contract party, then like the live life claim, what's the use of having it? It's not really going to do you much good. So, as always, the grammar comes first. And the final uh, question of the day, the final question would be, what is a mathematical interface on grammar? We hear Colin David Eifenwin Colin Miller saying that he discovered or he broke the mathematical interface on grammar. In the fiction, think about what interface is. What is an interface? Do you know what an interface is? Go ahead and take a moment to look it up if you need to. You can just Google it and it'll come up with a pretty simple adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun uh, definition of that, or maybe several. So once you have that in your head, move that over to grammar. We have grammar, we have math, and then we have the interface. What is the interface? The interface would be some of the mechanics of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now, if you notice, in the title itself, correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, it gives closure to what it is. It's three parts. The first part is correct sentence structure, communication. The second part is parse, and the third part is syntax. Now, what takes authority over all of that? It's the last fact in that compound fact, grammar. It's not the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, math. No, it's correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. You cannot teach math unless you have grammar. You must have the grammar to teach the math. But you can't, the same can't be said vice versa. You can't really teach grammar using math only math. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what the mathematical interface is, if we take the most simple example that Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller himself has given hundreds of times, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. You have the same values forwards and backwards. That's how you check that math problem. To see if you're correct, you do it backwards. What are the pivotal points in that scenario? It's the plus and minus signs. Those things flip to their opposite, you could say opposite or congruent sign. Plus, the uh, congruent sign to plus is minus. The congruent sign to the times is the division symbol so on and so forth. The positionals in correct sentence structure behave the same way. 
for is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. So if you say, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim by the claimant, period. Backwards, for the claimant of the claim is with the facts by the claimant's knowledge. Those positionals flip to their congruent positional function. One positional, one function, one congruency, and that is the interface. That is how you check your sentence. If it holds the same value forwards as it does backwards, then you know it's correct sentence structure communication. And again, if you want to check out my correct sentence structure playlist here on YouTube, that's all explained in there uh, multiple times and from many different angles. And if you have any grammar questions, feel free to reach out to, uh, to me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Or if you want to apply for my confidential correct grammar workshops. I appreciate your viewership. Uh, if you value what you're seeing here, feel free to hit the thumbs up button or the thumbs down button. Uh, subscribe. Turn on your notifications for when I do the uh, short videos, the uh, normal question of the day videos. And uh, I'll see you soon.